That sounded like thunder. That's, thund that. that's thunder and lightning, and I'm not I'm not too impressed with thunder and lightning. That's horrible. When I was a child, I used to hide under the kitchen table when it was thundering. Like I, I really, I have no idea. It's a completely irrational fear, and I have no idea why. So coming up in today's video on the National Planning Policy Framework, things you need to know. There will be seven changes shared with you. And one which I'm really, really looking forward to, Linda sharing, is the changes to Article 4. Yes, Article 4 directions are changing. Stay tuned for that. Also, we need to provide for trees and the details on who has to provide for those trees in our developments. And more importantly, Linda tells me, the statues. Yes, statues. Stay tuned to find out more. Linda, we have seven things on our list, seven changes in the National Planning Policy Framework. So can you summarize quickly what those seven things are for our audience? And then we'll deep dive each one of them afterwards. Right. Hello, everybody. Again, Andrew, thank you for that. Uh, these are the seven points that I've put forward. Other people might have other issues that they'll highlight. I'm just going to do these seven. First one, improved design quality. Second one, new developments should plant trees. The next one is sustainable development. Make of that what you will solar and solar farms and flood zones so it's not roof panels faster delivery of public service infrastructure okay and maintaining statues guidance yes you had that right statues and finally article 4 direction changes wow that's an awful lot coming up today linda so let's go in back to the top. Uh, when you say design policies, I, I've got this sort of beautiful buildings image and thinking of a, a beauty pageant. So let's, let's dive into number one, design code and beautiful buildings. Yeah, listen to you in design pageants. You're so retro, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but it is all about, it's all linked into the National Model Design Code that's also been produced at the same time as the NPPF. It's about trying to improve the design quality. Now, I have a bit of a problem with this because it's a very subjective issue to grapple with. So the previous NPPF said well-designed, beautiful and safe places. Well, no, it said well-designed and safe built environment. We've now got, sorry, got that the wrong way around, well-designed, beautiful and safe places. Now, my issue with this, this is a new test and it must be, poly, any development must be policy compliant. So if it's not well-designed and it talks about outstanding and innovative designs that promote high levels of sustainability, it can be refused. So if I do the design on my laptop in Microsoft Paint, that's likely to get refused because it normally gets accepted, surely. Well, I'd, I'd be very surprised if that got accepted by any local authority, quite frankly. But um, this puts added pressure on probably not um, a lot of the property divest uh, in developers and investors out there that uh, perhaps are listening to these videos. But certainly the, the volume house builders, where there are hundreds of houses, there are uh, uh, roads and access points and, and roundabouts. So that is probably going to have a major impact. But it will also have a major impact on smaller developers who are going to have to look at this interp and their agents, architects and such, who are going to have to look at creating beautiful buildings and spaces. How that's going to be interpreted is anyone's guess. Well, that sounds really interesting. Beauty as a, a concept in planning. Mm. Because beauty, I mean, let, let's take artwork. Tracy Eminen, love her artwork. Who's your favourite artist? Are you into the same sort of thing? Hate it. 
hate it. I mean, it's no, it's just not my it's just not my kind of cup of tea. So this is where we have a problem where you'll get some planners and some authorities will think one design is beautiful, but other planners and local councillors in another authority will say that's horrendous. So how is I mean, I know there's inconsistency in planning across the board already. Um, because there has to be because of local diversification. But how is this going to be managed? And if this is supposed to provide clarity for developers and outside professionals, I'm not convinced it does. No. Well, let's ask the audience, would you like us to do a video on beauty and design and dive in a little bit deeper on this one in a future episode? Oh, please, no, please, please, do, please don't ask us to do the beauty one, please. No. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, let, let's jump forwards. Was, was number two sustainability? Yes, it was. No. Okay. Well, uh, I, this I'm, sounds more my sort of thing. I'm an eco warrior. I like sustainable rainwater harvesting, solar panels, you know, ground source heating. Is this what we're talking, Linda? Those trees have been complaining about you hugging them as well, Andrew. Oh, now, I'm a tree hugger. Now, sustainable development. Sustainable development has always been what, what was called in the earlier, uh, the golden thread running through um, this guidance. But the definition of sustainable development has now been extended. And it's all it's always underpins the planning system. It's now been expanded to include the 17 global goals for sustainable development from the UN. So the United Nations yep. have now got an input yep. into our planning policy. Exactly. Wow. And now, now I'm looking forward to this video that you're going to do on the 17 <laughs> global goals of the UN. Yeah. Drop a comment below if you'd love Linda to do a, a video on the 17 global goals of the UN. Please don't. I, if, I am not going to go through the 17 global goals for sustainable development here and now. Call me Greta. <laughs> no. So we will move swiftly on to solar and flood zones. <laughs> OK, let, I have solar panels on a number of my properties. Now, let's talk solar panels. They're one of my best tenants. They never, <laughs> never go into arrears. They right. never moan. Excellent. Now, it's not just about solar panels. It's actually broader than that. It's about solar farms. So the, the change, again, might not be, unless you're particularly into solar panel farms, it's not particularly going to be of, of much interest to property investors and developers. I'm sorry about that. We will get to the good stuff further on. So, but the change for this is that solar farms have been identified as essential infrastructure, obviously to keep all of our electric cars running. Um, Naturally. Yeah, naturally. So that means solar farms no longer need to meet what was called the exception test in flood zones one and two. Now, that that just opens this up quite a lot further so that lots more solar farm development can go on. However, essential infrastructure will still only be permitted in flood zone three essentially functional floodplain where the exceptions test is passed so there's still an exceptions test for the really serious flooding areas but the other ones it's now gone so i i would imagine there will be a lot more people looking at locating um solar panel farms on land that previously was not going to work well from my point of view i look at it and go you can't graze your cattle on that field because certain times of year you need to supply your cattle with armbands so they can swim or float yeah so a solar panel you know it, it might be shocking electric and water but you know what a shocking policy for them to come out with it's it's a little odd it's a little odd, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously this is all about global warming and trying to be sustainable and all of that sort of stuff. So the next one, point five that I've got on here is faster delivery of public service infrastructure. Now, I 
kind of thought that that was broadband and Wi-Fi and all of this kind of stuff that they've been central government have been banging on about getting it into rural areas for a long time now. But no, 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 it's it's more than that. Um, this I was thinking it was hospital meals being delivered by Uber when you said <laughs> <to> deliver. <laughs> oh, yeah, companies. yeah, deliver something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it puts an emphasis again. There's a bit more of a burden on local planning authorities, work at councils, working with developers, delivery partners and statutory bodies to ensure faster delivery of public service infrastructure. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means things like hospitals. And obviously what we've seen the last 18 months in the pandemic, hospitals are right at the forefront, but it also includes colleges and what it calls in the MPPF a criminal justice accommodation i think that means prisons yeah i was gonna say yeah. it, it, if it's a duck call it a duck please yeah. you know yeah criminal yeah. justice facilities that's a prison in your yeah. in, in everyday language in in anybody on the streets terms it is absolutely a prison yeah. so but that's that's again another sort of layer of of requirements so they're obviously seeing that new hospitals expanded extended hospitals are required colleges and and it's all going to be for the the wi-fi and the and the you know the next generation of how you do teaching and um so yeah it's it's just a, a shift but it's been added into the mppf okay the next that's a sort of big developer thing rather than something that your average developer can get involved in i think it definitely is i think it's something to do with when uh volume house builders are building large estates it will be part of um possibly part of uh with maybe clinics and things like that it may be possibly part of the section 106 uh, agreement but it will also be brand new hospitals and things like that so it, it, it it's not just volume house builders well, that, that that happened happened happened. to me uh, a, a major housing estate went up and as part of the section 106 they had to build and provide for a brand new expanded gp surgery for yeah. the extra yeah users lots lots of that goes on um and now whether there's going to be <clears throat> clinics that are allied to hospitals that's that's the type of thing that's going to be required okay point, point six statues my favorite <laughs> now we all know why this is coming yeah i know oh thank you <laughs> we all know why this has come up and i'm i'm not going to get into any of that but this is has been added to the mppf again I think this is adding things into the planning process and the planning system that strictly are not a non planning requirements. And I, again, I'm not entirely, I think central government have looked at this and thought, where can we bung this? And I think that the, the burden has fallen on, on, on so plan, the planning system, which I think is wrong, to be honest. What I'm hearing from you then so far is, as part of the National Planning Policy Framework 2021, statues have to be incorporated in our new developments. Is that right? No, it's not oh. about that. It's oh. about, right, it's about the removal or alterations to statues and, mo and any kind of monument. The, there's an increased protection to these assets. And it, it adds a further layer of complexity, in my opinion, to the to the process. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be listed, so they can be non-listed. And I'm I'm actually going to quote what it says from the local from the MPPF just briefly. In considering any applications to remove or alter a historic statue, plaque, memorial, or monument, whether listed or not. Local planning authorities should have regard to the importance of their retention in situ and, where appropriate, explaining their historic and social context rather than removal. So I'm not convinced that this should be laid at the door of, of, of the planning system, to be honest, but, but it's in there and I suppose it's part of the built environment. But, you know, explaining the historic and social context rather than removal. Oh, I don't see that as a function of planners, quite frankly, but it's in the NPPF. 
so what, what we're effectively saying is it's about protecting the country's heritage, uh, mm -hmm. the statues, maintaining them, not removing them. Yeah. And I have images in my head at this moment in time that I've seen on the news of statues being pulled over um, in, in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is in this country, we're going to do our damnedest to protect them. So that's what Linda, it looks like. Article fours must be number seven on the list. Is, is um, that right? Finally. I hate article fours because they stop us doing what we want to do mm. with permitted developments and prior approvals. So give well, me some good news. Well, you will be pleased to hear this. In paragraph 53, the, all, all of the paragraphs in the MPPF, and I'm, I've not been a geek and named them, but this is, if you want to look for it, it's paragraph 53. This is... Mm, kind of good news because you know me I'm, I'm never just fully good news. well usually I'm not but so article four directions <sighs> at the moment uh, article four directions to prevent things like office to residential conversions and any conversions to residential are going to are being extended until July 2022 next year so they're extended for another 12 months um, and that has specifically been done by central government so that local planning authorities can get their act together kind of thing. Now, where local planning authorities think that, for example, class M and class MA, which is conversion of commercial buildings, now in class E, in use classes order class E, if they think they're gonna have a detrimental impact the, on their high street or shopping areas, local planning authorities are going to still be able to put Article 4 directions removing permitted development rights, but they're Ooh, going... I, like to, I know, you like them. <laughs> we won't go there, Andrew. <laughs> right. They have to apply it to the smallest possible geographic area. So gone are the days when, you know, Article 4 directions have just been, they've just put it on the whole council. So they've always kind of had to justify these things, but it will be applied to the smallest geographic area possible. And also the council are going to have to have strong and real justification as to why these Article 4 directions should be approved by the Secretary of State. So it, it really is going to concentrate the mind of, of local planning authorities. And there's another but. If you are looking at these types of applications, do it now, because I predict that there will be a whole once councils kind of realize and think, oh, hang on a minute, the class M and MA are kicking in on the 1st of August they will start to look at these things and go, well, we don't want our shopping areas and high streets to be affected. They are going to start putting together new Article 4 directions to prevent the change of use. So there is a window of opportunity currently. Yes, I know the existing oh, ones that are all, we're like windows. <laughs> um, there's currently, the, the existing ones, there's nothing you can do about the existing ones. They're, they're here to until next year and if councils are really serious about them then they will try and repeat them and get them re reinstated yeah. but there is also an issue that that councils may not have thought about this and now as of the 1st of August think oh hang on a minute we we need to restrict some of these things so there is a window of opportunity if you are thinking of doing a prior approval application for change of use from use class E to residential, I would do this sooner rather than later. Do not leave it and think, oh, do you know what? I'll just get some tenants in and I'll 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 do it later. Get it done now. You can sit with that article that um prior approval application lasts for three years. Sit with it in your back pocket, get it done now. Well, that's some really wise advice there. And it's really good for you to have done seven criteria and actually ended on a good news story for us to Yay! Yay! Because we love you when you give us good news, Linda. 
we're going to get a load of positive comments below about how people love your good news that Article 4s are going to expire. Now, you know me, I'm that awkward little bugger that sits there and asks awkward little questions. Yes. Class G, a new prior approval that we've done a couple of videos on recently here. Is that captured by this Article 4? Because Class G has to be above the retail space. And it doesn't really say whether it's MMA, G or not. Well, in your personal opinion, what, what would you say a gut feel is? Yeah, no, it's a, a great question, Andrew. And obviously it's a question that people out there will be wondering about. I think class G, if, if say a local planning authority is to say, all right, we're going to put an article four direction. We're going to remove permitted development rights along this bit of shopping parade. We don't want them to change the whole buildings. And that's, that's, that there is the nub of it. Class G is only, as of the first of all, a prior approval application to convert the upper floors to residential. So from that point of view, if these Article 4 directions are to prevent impact on shopping areas and the high street, Class G doesn't have that impact. It create it actually creates vitality because it, it how you have residential tenants above the retail or the Class E use mm -hmm. at the ground floor. So I don't think Class E Class G is going to be affected. I think it's more likely going to be Class M and Class MA, which we did videos on the other day. Um, so it's it's li more likely to be those, the conversion of the whole building and changes to the front elevation and all of that kind of thing that is more likely to be restricted by uh, councils. So that's really positive news that Class G might not be affected by this ruling. I'm loving this already. This, this new national planning policy framework, it's good news. It's good news because we get more solar farms, fewer cows with methane gas given off. We've got more statues being retained and maintained so that the council will be out there scrubbing the bird poo off Winston Churchill's shoulder. We've got parks and community areas, uh, orchards even being created as, as part of larger house developments. Wow, this is great. We've got beautiful designs. And as you can tell, Linda's choice and my choice of art, artist are not quite the same. So that's going to be an interesting one. And it, we've got to meet the 17 UN goals. Wow. Great to know the UN are having a local impact on our buildings. And, you know, as always, Article 4, our favourite topic. And this time, it appears that the council are having the handcuffs put on them to hold them back from restricting us developers from bringing quality homes, beautifully designed, in line with National Design Code, to the high street. So, Linda. That is another phenomenal update. And I know looking at the comments as we've been recording this video, people have been deciding between Class G and Class MA, or they've been putting in the comments box, they want their questions answered. And a few people have even put the one a Class M video explaining what that is. Okay. Great update. If there's anything else that you guys have got as questions for Linda or I, drop them in the comments block box in the video below but linda fantastic as always reach out to linda on linkedin or at her email address which is in the details below at planetright.co.uk thank you is there anything you'd like to share as a, a pearl of wisdom having numbered all of the paragraphs i mean we were even talking paragraph 198 is statues <laughs> Anything you'd like to share with them, just to get it off your chest? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get too bent out of shape about this one. You know, it's there are some minor tweaks. There are some bits and pieces. Beauty is going to be open to massive interpretation. 
and and that's about it so i don't think you need to worry too much about this but there are going to be some changes that local planning authorities are going to have to take but don't worry too much about it well as they say beauty is only skin deep linda we all know it's what's in the heart that counts of course on that note, we'll say goodbye to everybody and we look forward to welcoming you back. If you've not already done so, smash that like button, hit that share button, and don't forget to comment below. And if you're a new subscriber, make sure you subscribe to our videos because we have new videos coming out each and every week just for you. It's goodbye from me, Andrew Roberts. And it's goodbye from me until next time, Linda Wright. Thank you for watching.